What's up, guys, and welcome to another Hungover Podcast. Today, we're going to be talking about Nintendo and their uh, sort of eight-month-long stint with the Nintendo Switch. Is it a gimmick, or is it here to stay? We'll find out as we delve in in today's podcast. But I must tell you, I'm one of your hosts, Julian, alongside... Ivan. Hey. What's up, guys? And also, I'd also like to tell you, that you can get this podcast on SoundCloud, iTunes, and in video form in YouTube. And we'd love if you left us a review on iTunes because that helps with our visibility on the internet. But, Yvonne, I think that's enough of the uh, rigmarole, as it were. Um, Let's get into the podcast. The topic of the show is, of course, Nintendo, but we start our podcast out every single week by asking each other, what did you drink last night and what media have you been consuming throughout the week? That's an excellent series of questions. Um, so this week was my birthday, so I had... Yeah, happy birthday, man. Thank you. 20, maybe you shouldn't, I don't know, doesn't matter. 27. Uh, <laughs> 27. Anyway, um, so I had, I tried Tattinger Champagne for the first time Whoa. on my birthday. Or it wasn't like the first time I've had Tattinger, but it was the first time I've had it for my birthday. Okay. <laughs> uh, <laughs> it was a good It was a good champagne. I enjoyed it. I've had it once before, at least, and mm-hmm. it was um, it was good. It was um, very fruit forward, as I recall, probably a bit citrusy. Is that a, is that a brute? Do you know? It is a brute. Yeah, it is, right? Okay. Yeah. It was good. Uh, it wasn't too acidic as, because the problem with me is I really like heavy acidity in my champagne. But yeah, I also no. have intense nice. Harper. So That's those not two nice. don't really match. <laughs> <laughs> that sucks, man. <laughs> I know. I'm so sorry. <laughs> uh, but luckily, I the Tattinger was just crisp enough that it was really good to drink and so my thursday night was probably the most like um intensely bourgeois way of watching football ever <laughs> i got did your team win sirloin steak at least. oh man <laughs> you were like uh ron swanson on his birthday <laughs> just sitting alone eating his steak and having a nice whiskey <laughs> <laughs> basically for his birthday. best birthday ever yeah, I, so. that sounds like an awesome birthday to me i i think i'm gonna consider doing something like that for my birthday now it was dope it was just steak salad champagne and then i got Oof. a grenache uh as well to to eat while enjoying the steak that's really awesome man i'm glad you had a good one yeah um then uh in terms of uh consuming things this weekend uh I had a birthday blast this weekend, and I know this isn't technically consuming media, but it is kind of interesting, so I'm going to bring this into the pod. So I did a mystery escape room this Uh weekend, and I had a James Bond spy-themed birthday, so we did a spy-themed escape room where we had to track down down (laughs) information on a guy who was a um, money launderer for organized crime. Okay, pretty cool. So we had to go through a series of clues and opening locks and different things and figuring out how pictures fit into uh, combinations. And it was a lot of like locks and different combinations, but they had different types of locks. So it was pretty interesting. They weren't all just like dial turns. There were some where it was letters and numbers. And the, what was really cool about this room in particular was that they had a um, Enigma encoder machine. Mm -hmm. So you had three cogs with varying spokes, and so they turned at different radiuses, and each of the spokes had a letter on it. Was it like the actual one that they use for... uh, World War II? I don't know, uh, because I haven't seen a picture of those. Okay. (laughs) (laughs) But it's the same basic principle, where it's three different levels of encoding. So you encode one letter that goes to another letter that goes to the final output. And then That's you really cool. Between the first cog and the second cog to get the full word, but you have to have a basic three-letter word code um, for each of the cogs to set up the whole code breaking correctly. So it was uh-huh. really intense. <laughs> That's we, awesome, man. <laughs> yeah, and we had fifty minutes to solve. Uh, there were two levels of basic uh, of um, difficulty. So we solved okay. level two with about eighteen twenty minutes to go. 
And they were like, okay, let's do the harder level, level four. And it's in the same room, it's just you have to unlock more locks and get more information. And we couldn't solve it, so we left the room basically right as time is expiring, having not solved the, the hard level. A lot of the blame I take on myself... Uh, I was in charge of the encoding decoding machine, the Enigma machine, and it was it was tough. <laughs> no, that's that is a a lot to take in. I I definitely don't know. I could do that if I could do that. Uh, but it was For a sure. lot of fun, and I want to do more of them. And I want to do ones that are more not all like lock combinations, but more like sim symbols, and you have to use those to decode something else, or or like hopefully there are more complex ones. I know that there are a bunch of good ones in the city, so maybe we could check one out. Yeah, um, yeah. There, but the the after that we went and played laser tag, and that was a lot of fun. Whoa! I awesome. got to take my first person shooter skills that I've been really <laughs> training up in Destiny and translate them oh, into real shit. life by tagging people with a laser. <laughs> and uh, I awesome. won all three games between my family, basically. Uh, <laughs> but there were some little kids who also played with us, and they were super okay. annoying. They would, like, oh. run up and cover your gun with their hand and wow. shoot you in the chest. Lame. Yeah. It was super lame. But uh, there were several times where it was, like, a, a hive of them. There were, like, three of them working together in this corner, and they <laughs> would shoot down the hallway. And I would I would tactic up to them because uh, I'm a better shot than little kids. So yeah. I could shoot them. Then when they respawned, I shot them again. Then I was exiting, uh, exfiltrating the hallway. I shot them as I was exfiltrating. But my back was open, and even though we had a truce among my family to not shoot each other, they shot me in the back and deactivated me as I was exfiltrating. Was really of course, nice. you would go for the kids first. Come on. <laughs> Come on, man. Who do you think what I you am? Doing? <laughs> <laughs> they got to learn sometime. You're right. You know, They're going to get wrecked at some point in their lives. Uh, might as well be a laser tag against Savon. <laughs> <laughs> yes, so now I'm just getting ready for the Destiny raid. Oh, awesome! What a what is your power level right now? Uh, it's in the it's high two sixties, low two seventies. Okay, cool. Almost there, man. Almost there. Um, I'll tell you, Ivan. Unless you have anything else to add, I'm good. Um, I last last night. Well, yesterday I got home. Uh, I visited my mom. You know, we had a nice. We went out to get some ramen, but uh, that was pretty awesome. We had I had some sake there. Nice. Uh, pretty good sake. I can't remember the name um, because I also wasn't told. I think it was just the house sake. It was still good. <laughs> it was still good. Um, I don't know much about sake, so I can't really comment on it. But um, uh, what did I got home at around 3, and I started... What did I do? I basically I started playing Destiny 2, as, as one does um, now, because it's it's well, I don't know Destiny 2 is out all right um and so I started playing I got this invite from some random person I add a lot of people to my friends list just so I can raid a lot mm -hmm. um I got an invite from one of them and he said I need one for the raid and so I jumped in and we did the raid it was pretty awesome um nice we did it in two hours which was pretty sweet that was obviously I mean I've done the raid once before but I know how to do every single part and so I basically, it basically showed me that you can get through the raid efficiently if everyone knows what they're doing. <laughs> um, and also they had this nifty glitch for the, for the end boss. So there's this last boss in the raid and there's a glitch that you can do by a, a certain sequence of events in terms of killing yourself and one person leaving the fire team, the fire team and then coming back. Um, and then if you do it all right, there will be no uh, enemies that spawn except for the boss. So it's so cheap, but we did it. And um, I, I mean, I'll, How do I'll people totally... figure this shit out? Exactly. How do people fucking figure? How did they even figure out the raid to begin with, to be honest with you? Because that shit is complicated. But uh, yeah, so they figured it out uh, or they looked it up on the Internet and we did it. And the last boss was fairly easy for us. So we got through it. And I was really happy, and we got all the gear. Um, so I did in two hours, and then I streamed. So I, I think I played video games for 12 hours because I was up until 3, got home at 3. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> I played video games for 12 hours yesterday. Uh, <laughs> finally, god damn it. Um, and then I streamed. I played what did I, I played Stardew Valley and Neo because I've been trying to beat Neo, 
um, the samurai game that is Dark Souls. Mm -hmm. um, and I'm still stuck on the same boss. I didn't get anywhere in that game, but it was fun to remember how to play the controls. <laughs> <It> <laughs> took me like an hour to figure out the controls. And then, um, then I played Stardew Valley be uh, for stream. Um, that was fun. I'm in, currently in the winter time, so there's not much I can do other than mining and fishing. Um, you can't really, you can plant some things, uh, so you can farm some things, but there aren't that many things to farm, as that makes sense in real life. Um, and then I hop back on Destiny for <laughs> another nightcap session. Uh, <laughs> God damn, I can't Did get away from again, this huh? stupid... No, no, I didn't do the raid. I just wanted to do the Nightfall, which um, is a very difficult version of of a specific strike for mm -hmm. any given week. Uh, they choose a specific strike per week, and then they add these uh, modifiers to it to make it very difficult. And the most difficult part is there's a, a time limit to your strike now. So that makes it super hard. And then we wanted to do the prestige version of it, so the hard version, um, mm -hmm. not to mention it was RA hard. Um, so that basically just decreased the amount of time we had. So we had to, and these were, I found these two random guys online, so I didn't know them. Um, but now they're my friends on PSN, so who knows. But uh, we, we played that for about two hours and we failed. So I was very frustrated. <laughs> but we, we were getting pretty good. We were getting pretty good at speed run. You essentially have to speed run the strike and do everything very efficiently. Um, and it's pretty exciting stuff. Uh, yeah, so I played a lot of Destiny and that's what I did. Uh, but I did get a, a good beer. Um, this is the first time I've drank in two weeks, actually, surprisingly, yesterday. Um, and yeah, I got but... Fat Tire. I, I don't know if you know the yeah. brewery. Yeah, I got their new Belgium. So they make a Belgium-style ale, I guess, um, as they're not from Belgium, uh, or they're not located in Belgium. Um, and it was pretty good. It was uh, it tastes like, you know, you get that funky flavor from the Belgium ale, but it's still uh, nice and Wheaty, wheaty. I believe they use wheat to make Belgian ales. I'm not sure. Yeah, Belgian ale is mostly wheat, but I thought that. Hmm. What? Nothing. Okay. <laughs> I think New Belgium is the brewing company, and Fat Tire is the beer. Really? No. Yeah. No, I've had a Fat Tire ale. Haven't yeah, I? Yeah, Fat Tire Belgian style ale beer. Oh. New I've Belgium been... is the brewing company. Motherfucker. I got owned. I I thought Fat Tire was a brewery. Really? No, Fat Tire is their premium. It's like not their premium beer, but it's their standard beer that they sell everywhere. Holy and shit. And then the but the company is New Belgium. Holy shit. Get owned, you just bro. blew my mind, man. <laughs> God damn. They should switch the order of the logos then it shouldn't be fat tire new belgium it should be new belgium fat tire uh, on the on the label right it, shouldn't it, it oh, says that i just didn't look it was <laughs> get owned so hard, i got bro. owned oh my god it was still good all right i enjoyed the beer god damn it all right Yvonne. well speaking of getting owned i think um nintendo has some things up their sleeves that uh, they're slowly creeping their way back on top, I think. I would say so. Um, Why would you say so, Julian? Well, what evidence they, do you have? They released a, a certain popular product, consumer grade product, um, back in March. And uh, I believe it's doing pretty well, if I do say so myself. In fact, some would say their console hybrid, the Nintendo Switch, is the highest selling uh console home console on the market for five out of the past seven months including i think last month they were the highest selling um home console now this is this comes as a shock so because for the past five years nintendo has been sort of waning they've been sort of falling behind very far in the console race so there's the console race between uh or fight whatever you want to call it 
the PlayStation, Sony's PlayStation, Microsoft's Xbox, and Nintendo has had a console that previously failed, a Wii U. Um, right. It was not very popular. Uh, I believe it. They ended production of it last year, and it uh, it sold in total, I believe, around somewhere around 13 million consoles. Um, just for for comparison's sake, Sony Sony PlayStation sold, um, I believe, one million consoles on the first day it was uh, it was on on launch day in America in America alone, I think, um, because it it launched staggered. It had a staggered launch across the world. Um, in Japan, I don't believe it launched for until a, almost six months later or something like that, um, because the console market is not very it's not it's not very strong in in japan right now i don't think i believe everyone's shifting over to mobile games but um i think north america is really the biggest market for consoles right now i would say uh with europe being a close second yeah probably um so yeah so nintendo released the nintendo switch with an amazing game called the legend of zelda breath of the wild you can see in the background right now if you're watching the video on youtube um it it sold gangbusters basically they sold the nintendo switch i think they ended up having around a million sold by the end of the month and they essentially had a like a 90 i think they sold more copies of the legend of zelda than they did switches more copies of the legend of zelda for switch than they did nintendo (laughs) switches for it was it was like that for a couple days or something Um, because people wanted to get people were going crazy they wanted to get the physical copy of the game the digital copy of the game they wanted to get the um what's it called sorry the whatever the legendary edition of the game that came with the all the extras and then they also wanted it digital because it's a handheld console essentially so they got two copies of it which is insane to me um but yeah that game has continued to sell i don't know how many how many games how many copies it's sold currently but um it According seems to like this uh, website uh vgcharts.com it sold yes. 3.7 million uh for the Nintendo Switch wow that's Plus quite a few 1.1 for the Wii U so in total 4.8 but 3.7 on the Switch right and i believe Nintendo has uh, set their forecast for sales of the Nintendo Switch to be around 10 million by the end of their fiscal year, I think. And I think they, they've said they're well on their way to that um, to that goal. So, so The Legend of Zelda, I mean, everyone has been talking about it for the entire year. I think, I think it's sort of waned in, in people's eyes right now because of how many games are coming out. But um, it was all the rage back in the day, back in March, and then through it was an incredible game. I mean, up from to just, June, just, everyone was talking about it. Yeah, just the way that it played to the hype and just succeeding on um, bringing a product that matched the hype of what that game was uh, was right. So Zelda had underperformed in the previous generations. We we were waiting on something. It, when the Nintendo Switch announcement came. We were watching the whole conference, waiting for Zelda, 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 Zelda. They closed the show with Zelda. We thought, great, it looks good. How is it going to play? And then it came out, and it didn't disappoint. And I mm-hmm. think word of mouth and a lot of um, a lot of other things really contributed to making this Zelda game sell well. But it also just the style of how it plays is is an amazing uh amazing contribution to the genre of like this rpg action game right so i i believe the nintendo switch is in in also not to mention a a great a great console in theory on paper um i think in general uh, also but uh because you can you can dock it at home play on the big screen or you can just take it with you and you can play all the same games at no uh, cost to to performance so all the games perform the same way in the handheld mode as they do on on the screen um, minus resolution I believe the screen is only 720p but you don't really notice because the screen is so small um, so that that idea alone um, sort of blew everyone's mind and I think a lot of people 
were thinking, oh, I don't think it couldn't possibly be this good. It couldn't possibly work as they're saying it's going to work. You know, you just come home, you put it in the dock, and then a second later, it's on the screen already. There's no transfer time at all. And and little did we know, uh, they they re released the ge the console on March third, and it worked exactly how they said it would work. Um, and so they really, de I think Nintendo really delivered on the on the promise of what the Switch can be. And I think a lot of developers are beginning to see that now. And Nintendo, and they're also beginning to see that. Um, that the so that good. Nintendo the sales are doing well people are buying games on the switch so I believe many many indie developers have have um, said that their game sells best on switch so they they've seen if they say they had a, a game that was re released on PS4 PS Vita uh, Xbox one PC before and then now they're currently bringing it to switch the switch version is selling very very well because people are really clamoring to play anything on this console because you can just take it with you anywhere, which is really great. Um, but I also want to say that I think this is they're also seeing that Nintendo is 100% behind this console. And if they're supporting it, um, which they have been every single every single month, except for maybe one, um, they've released a large game uh, of the caliber of the Legend of Zelda, essentially, um, they they released the Legend of Zelda, Splatoon Two, Arms, which was a big game. It sold very well. Uh, the Mario and Rabbits game supposed to be amazing. I didn't play it. And then uh, we're coming up on October now, which is going to be, I think, probably their well is their big game of the fall, um, Mario Super Mario Odyssey, um, coming up. So they're seeing that Nintendo's putting their whole one hundred percent of their support behind it. So they need to get on. So that that basically means that this thing's going to sell um, because Nintendo's delivering on the games. So everyone wants to jump on the Switch bandwagon, I think, um, because if you get your game on there, it's going to sell well. You're going to make a lot of money. Um, but what what do you think yeah. about that, Ivan? Do you think that Nintendo's <laughs> doing the right thing with this console? I think it would, the statistics clearly show that they've done really well and that this this hybrid... Um, gaming at home mobile platform is an excellent way to go. What we were talking about last week, right, is the how much the mobile market influenced um, game development and how right. we've gone from these microtransactions, which are really important in mobile games, um, and now we have a console system that is as as mobile as a mobile game, but has a much intent more intense hardware system behind it. So you mm -hmm. don't get these crappy games that you're paying two dollars to do bullshit in, like uh, Marvel Pulse Quest. I love you. It is a very <laughs> fun game to get involved in for hours. It's <laughs> worthless. It really isn't. <laughs> like the gameplay isn't super exciting. If I could play Legend of Zelda for hours the go, in the yeah. mobile space rather than playing uh, a three color match game, I would much yeah. rather do that. <laughs> but. Now with this hybrid system, I think it's, it's a really cool way that Nintendo is pushing forward, especially in their home market in Japan where mobile gaming is super popular. Uh, I think they're meeting the demand at home and then abroad because this Nintendo Switch is selling really, really well to, classic, uh, to people who enjoy these classic gaming characters, Mario, uh, Zelda, like Link and Zelda. And, and, but they're also integrating new things like ARMS and... Even though one two switch is is not like characters, it's integrating the yeah. new functionality of the switch and showing what the switch can do. And I think that that's another reason that game developers are getting excited behind the switch because again, the Wii inspired a lot of crappy games, but that was just because the technology was behind where it could be. The Wii U was a cool console, but nobody really bought it. Now we have right. the Switch, which is both a cool console with a lot of cool concepts. And it's selling well, so it will attract a lot of developers, I think, interested in entering that market and playing around with game dynamics in a way that I think Legend of Zelda did really well, or the, the Breath of the Wild did really well. I think 1-2-Switch really example, exemplified. I think ARMS is an interesting game, but it's not one that I would play. But it yeah. also it plays with the, the physical hardware that the Switch offers, which makes it an intriguing game. 
So I'm really excited to see what can happen with this, and I think Nintendo has gone uh, their very weird way. Um, instead of fully engaging in this conflict between that is raging between Microsoft and Sony, right, and the traditional PC or uh, not PC, but traditional console war, right? right. So the Nintendo Switch is something that's very different and is inspiring in terms of you can present a gaming experience that is very different and has a different niche in, entirely and mm -hmm. be successful in that way. Now, the problems with it is that even though Nintendo is trying to do all these niche things that are totally different, they haven't taken some of the most in, most successful parts of the traditional console system. Absolutely, me, yeah. System from Sony and Microsoft and integrated it. Like this very idiotic and chaotic um chat and multiplayer chat link system that they're doing basic functionality of headphones and different things that they've had to kind of patch in and integrate along the way it's just this really odd thing that i think was was already there you didn't have to reinvent the wheel you could just see what worked and integrate that into your system but nintendo's trying to go in another way in, in places where I don't think it's necessarily beneficial for them as a company or gamers in general. No, right. It's it's. I think it's sort of been the tale of Nintendo for the past, for basically the past, well, now it's 2017, almost 20 years. Well, yeah, I'd say almost 20 years now. <laughs> it's kind of crazy. Um, well, the I would say let's, let's leave... From the Wii onward, the Nintendo is sort of the Nintendo. Nintendo's sort of been making some crazy decisions. I mean, the Wii itself was they they didn't choose to embrace online functionality, and then even when they got up to, I believe the Wii U came out in 2010 or 2011. Even then, um, they they failed to meet the mark when it came to online functionality such as voice chat or anything like that. Or even sim as simple as sending a message or sending a friend request to someone is very difficult, even on the Wii U. Um, and so it's a classic tale, I think, that Nintendo is making all these uh, right decisions, or at least now they are in for the Nintendo Switch. It's classic case of like one step forward or five steps forward, but they're still taking like two or three behind in the uh, spe specifically in the. Um, the market when it comes to online functionality. So they don't have uh, an achievement or trophy system, which I think is I think is pretty important. I think um, if your game has a trophy system or a, a platinum trophy or a, whatever it's called on Xbox, a platinum achievement, um, I think the game, I think there is there are statistics that show that those games sell better. People do like these um, arbitrary achievement things that mean nothing in reality, but they're fun to get and they make you feel good and you, you get a sense of accomplishment if you get a platinum trophy or something, um, which it, for people who don't know, um, platinum trophies, like they're basically thing tasks that you can do within the game and you get a trophy for it um, to basically boost your online ego. And uh, if you do all of the uh, trophies if you get all those tasks done in the game, there sometimes it's very difficult. You get what's called a platinum trophy, which is like you've one hundred percent of the game. Um, and Nintendo doesn't have that sort of system, and they've also, for the Nintendo Switch, it's still very difficult to talk to anyone online. Um, but you have to understand, I guess, you have to basically factor in that Nintendo primary caters primarily caters to a younger audience. I would say. Um, even though now they're encouraging many more uh, mature titles, as such as, did you know that Doom and Wolfenstein are coming to Nintendo Switch? Did you know that? <laughs> I think I knew about Wolfenstein. I didn't know about Doom. They they got Doom. Doom is coming out this year. Wolfenstein's coming out next year. So it's a little bit of the new Wolfenstein. It's a delayed uh, response. So they're they're getting with Beth with Bethesda uh, specifically. They're getting a lot of support from third parties so they're they're taking all these strides forward and then they still have these weird quirks with the system um so they get all these now they're starting to get some third party support from 
Uh, First-person shooters, gory games such as Doom, a very mature game, I would say. Um, or you could say immature based off of <laughs> <laughs> what you look at. But um, uh, yeah, and Wolfenstein telling this crazy story of, of some person trying to kill a bunch of Nazis. I guess that's that's in the... Um, and then I think they said... Uh, whatever, that's that's not related. But um, yeah, so they, they have all these mature titles but you still can't talk to someone online to help you out in splatoon when you fucking need help because <laughs> your team should be working together um so but you can't you can but it's very very difficult you have to go through your phone you have to do all these weird things yeah i think that um, the real thing here is that nintendo is, is they're stuck in this world which is increasingly becoming an online connectivity world yeah but they want to remain a couch co-op world Right, right. So Which they're they, they're stuck yeah. in this thing, and 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 things like introducing a trophy system or achievement system. It is part of building an online community where you can talk to people and show people um, how you play, how well you've done in a game, without mm -hmm. having to communicate. And I don't think that Nintendo's at their core, one of their core principles, is not building an online community. It's building a community of people who have to get together in order to to work because even like connecting through and playing each other online it's it's like very local co local based uh matchmaking as far as uh, as i knew on like the 3ds for a long time it was based on local matchmaking oh yeah pretty um, much as as opposed to you can play somebody who is in china from your your couch here um yeah so i think that there's a there's a just a difference in terms of philosophy and the approach to um, how to build a community around a gaming console. So Nintendo has always been like, let's get all of your buddies into a house and we'll just play together. Mm -hmm. um, now you can take that to somebody else's house and enjoy it together. That's what they're trying to do with the, the Switch, it feels like, right? You're building community by going places, uh, by bringing people together. Whereas online gaming communities are mostly like, we can be separated by huge distances and still connect online. Again, yeah. that leads to anonymity and different things. So I can understand where Nintendo, which is a is a gaming console that has always been, I, it to me it feels like they've always tried to straddle the border between esports and like the competitiveness and family friendly and, and enjoying it that way. So it's like yeah. if you build an online gaming community in your console system, then you're you're going way more into one direction as opposed to the other and i don't think they're ready to make that jump they want their competitiveness to be let's all get people who play pokemon together in a room and have them play together or like um playing something like a super smash brothers melee tournament things like they haven't they didn't design a game to be that but once it created that they were like okay how do we build in functionality that would bring people together into one area to play in a competitive fashion as opposed to doing that? It's true. Um, so they, they've they decided to take the route that is um, less walked, I would say, in terms of, in terms of uh, online functionality and, and things like that. And I think, um, I think it seems like they don't, they don't need to worry about it. Um, it people are still buying this thing and they're still buying games for it regardless of whether or not it has all the same things as the Xbox or the PlayStation. Um, and it, people seem to not care. It, it seems that way. So I don't know if they're going to have any incentive to put uh, in these functions, but we'll find out when they release their... They still haven't released their, their full online service. It's currently, I guess, in beta. You can get the app on your phone but um and then you'll eventually have to pay for it just like xbox and playstation and they still haven't released i think one of the most um the most requested thing from from nintendo is the virtual console which they released on the nintendo switch uh oh, sorry the nintendo wii back in 2006 i think um and they, they had a whole catalog of all their old games that you could just download onto your console. But how many of the old game. games? It, up to a certain point, right? Uh, the, well, I mean, aside from various licensing issues, they got quite a few games by the end, which is the end, which is coming soon uh, for the Nintendo Wii. They're shutting down the online servers. But they, they had 
um, everything up to the N64, pretty much. And they by now, I think they have pretty much any game that you would really want, aside from a, a few rarities that obviously are the IP could be end end up being owned by the developer who's no longer in business or something, um, or owned by a publisher. You know these these licensing issue issues. You you understand they get into a bunch of issues where they can't they can't they'd have to pay an exorbitant amount of money to buy the IP back and then all the assets of the game and re-release it. So it's it's not as simple as just oh we have the file put it online. But um so uh but that's that's a different issue. I mean they they haven't they they have it working. Um, but they don't want to put it on the Nintendo Switch just yet, for whatever reason. Um, but I, I suppose. What do you think that reason is? Um, I think it's a. If well, I, I don't speculate. know. I mean, I would probably say it's it's a server thing. I don't think they have a very functioning online. Just based off of my my uh, past experience with Nintendo online games and online services as a whole, uh, I would say that. Nintendo has not figured out online yet at all. Um, the Nintendo Switch runs off of Wi-Fi only, um, and I'm not exactly sure how good of a connection it can make online. But I don't, I don't really know if they know how to run servers or anything. <laughs> uh, but don't you but think then this again, is a thing that they could, you know, rent out or like subcontract to somebody to to run servers. Right. I uh, I'm pretty sure that's what they're doing. Um, but I, I don't know if they, they're choosing the correct companies or investing enough money into it um, because I don't think they... I think, like you said, they're very hesitant to go into this... go 100% into this online business um, and they, they're sort of clinging on to their old ways, uh, which, is, which is Nintendo, man. It's just who they're going to be. But uh, and I, don't, I don't necessarily want them to do that. I want them to put everything out online and, you know, I think it could be really cool. But uh, they also need to have a very extensive infrastructure, which I think they don't, they don't know. I don't necessarily know if they don't know how to do it, but they certainly haven't proven to me that they know how to do it. Is what I'm saying. Right. I'm not saying that I know how to do it. <laughs> I have no fucking. I, I like. I've been having issues with my internet for the past two weeks, and uh, the guy came today and he's like, "Yeah, uh, you have. We're gonna switch out your modem again." Like I hardly know how a modem works. Um, Fair enough. But that's I mean, not I'm not asking you to be <laughs> a, a technical expert. No, I, know. I was just asking as somebody who cares about Nintendo has has yeah. invested in several generations money. of handheld and consoles in nintendo's yeah. i think you're someone who has a lot of experience following what this company is doing especially outside of just playing games you're interested in how they run their business etc yeah so it's 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 an informed opinion to speculate on why they would provide this service for the wii u when they're gonna shutter that and haven't opened up the service for the switch yet right i just think you know i think they want to make sure it's a it's a large function to put that whole catalog of games however many games they launch with online and i think they just want to make sure everything launches succinctly and in sync in synctly <laughs> that's Justin not a word, but, uh, and, yeah. And all them yeah uh with their online service i think they're just gonna try to launch it all together and they're still working out some quirks with their online service they want to make sure it works well uh, when they launch it, and they need the time to figure that out, I think. I think that um, when they yeah. launch an online service and launch this this store, uh, if they have like an influx of of games from, for instance, GameCube, I think they'll have another oh my God. rush of people <laughs> buying these consoles. Yeah. How how much do you think these um old like the SNES or NES re re releases? How much do you think that's affecting Switch sales? especially um, with the, the which, fact that they're not which re available. releases so they've done these like mini consoles right where they release like, oh yeah the that NES right and the snes that's also what they're dealing with um i think that that's i mean that i think that's getting the, the nintendo name back into the uh the household it's turning them back into a household name i mean still i think people they used to call any game console the nintendo or or 
get your Nintendo or whatever. Mm-hmm. Um, it was just the the video game name that you knew. Um, and I think Brand to recognition. a certain extent they still are. But um, but yeah, so I think that's just getting it. That sort of excitement over getting a Nintendo product, um, I couldn't get it. I wanted to get an SNES um, Mini, but I'm not going to. I don't think I'm going to get one. I'm just going to wait for the virtual console now. But uh, I, I, I kind of wanted the, it for Star Fox 2. They're <laughs> holding off on launching the virtual console on Switch because yeah. of the introduction of these things? I think so. I I think that that that's probably true. I think that they want to sell as many of these as possible. They want to milk it for what it's worth um, and make money. I mean, they're in the business of making money. Their Nintendo is a company, so they have to make money, and they're definitely going to do whatever it it takes to get that money, uh, get that cheddar, as Uh, it were. Uh, (laughs) uh, I think that that there's another business plan that could be part of this, right? So, So on the one hand, you build out this this mini... You have to yeah. update the software in order for it to work on Switch or whatever. So you built out the mini while working on the software side. And so you can pay for the updates of the software through the hardware purchases because mm-hmm. they'll balance out. But at the same time, you're also gauging how important having the virtual market is, right? So how in, how ravenous are people for buying this product? It's the same kind of idea behind how Sony um, would uh, crowdfund for, what's that game? Shenmue. Shenmue, right? <laughs> Three, so Shenmue. S- Sony was like, Shenmue 3 needs to be crowdfunded or else we can't fund it. I see what you're saying. So it's yeah. a way of testing the market to see if, okay, Is are people even going to sell, fund right? it? And if they fund it, then presumably they'll buy it, right? So in the same yeah. way, Nintendo's testing out the capacity of the virtual market by releasing this hardware so you can test oh are people going to want to buy it and at the same time you're building up the software and updating the software which it needs for the virtual market on the switch anyway so it's kind Mm -hmm. of a very kismet uh process it's a really organic way of selling material that is really intriguing and it's actually really smart yeah no i i think they they struck gold with the nintendo switch and i think that sort of got them started with them becoming back into people's minds and getting the mind share of uh, the market right now. And so they can then push the SNES and NES Mini, um, which they already did, and those sold like crazy. And you, I don't think you can, to this day, get either of them. I think they're sold out. Um, and, I mean, they, they, they brought back the NES Mini for, I believe, or they might bring it back, I don't know. They, they were only selling it for a limited time, which is crazy, too. So I think they're still, um, their their business strategy is usually just try to be the the best. I mean, everyone's business strategy should be, should be this, to tell the most as, you, as much as you can. But to become the, like you said, get people ravenous about your product and, and they need to get it. They need to get it now. So they, and then... Um, I believe they they're a common business strategy for Nintendo is to create a artificial shortage or supply shortage uh, for their products and to create uh, this demand and hype over their product, which I think they did for the Nintendo Wii, um, and that ended up successful for them because they sold I don't know a hundred million or something of them, which is a lot. Well, um, it's about being um, conservative in your business practices, especially since. Sony and Microsoft, as we've talked about before, they're willing to take uh, hits on their console releases, right? They're willing right. To, to lose money on their consoles because they'll make it back over the lifespan and selling first-party titles, etc. Nintendo's strategy has never been to take a loss on hardware. So by th- there's just a difference in the terms of when you're taking a loss on hardware, you're just going to put it all out there and, and come back to it, right? But if you're not going to take a loss on hardware, you have to inch up to where that demand point really is so that artificialness is kind of just like the conservative way of pushing up to where you need to have the supply go to meet demand and by creating hype it pushes demand higher so it it kind of you can keep pushing and pushing and pushing yeah so it's a really again an interesting and 
I wouldn't say the best way of doing business because it does create like lots of upset children who can't get weeds for Christmas <laughs> or people are breaking banks to buy them on eBay. And this yeah. is another reason that they had to do uh, the re-release of the NES and I think the SNES because on eBay or other websites, they were selling for five, six times the price and it was just this price gouging. It's that crazy. Was like, it's okay, we'll release more. Don't don't buy them at this these prices. So yeah, well. I think it's also kind of a PR battle where if you're having this hype and everybody knows that, that Nintendo does this, it also creates two sides, right? People know that they're going to be a limited release so they can buy them and sell them at upmarket value. On the other hand, people are like, geez, Nintendo, we know that you have the ability to manufacture more of them. You're being a dick. <laughs> yeah, they're... they're uh... Yeah, I guess it, it's probably not as as simple as saying they're they're holding back stock just to make it a an exciting product but um but i think that's probably part of it i think they they must have done that at at some level on some level um but yeah so i i i think that nintendo is is certainly making a comeback here i think they're they're definitely making a lot of right correct moves with the nintendo switch and I'm very excited. I mean, what's everyone talking about nowadays is saying, oh, it, when when a new game comes out, they say, oh, is that on Nintendo Switch? Because it would be really great if it was on Nintendo Switch, because <laughs> then I could play it anywhere. Um, people are, and and now we're seeing that with Doom and Wolfenstein that that could potentially be a possibility. And then I think EA put the newest FIFA on it and NBA 2K18 or whatever. So there are a lot of current. Um, games that are going across the board and coming out for everything, which is really good news for Nintendo Switch. Um, even though the Nintendo Switch version is obviously going to be the weakest installment in terms of graphical fidelity and um, potentially uh, they're, they're going to be cutting some features out. I think they did that for the newest FIFA game. But it should uh, be optimized at least to run. <laughs> right, yeah. At least. That's, that's uh, the whole well, thing that Nintendo, Switch or Nintendo games have always been supremely optimized to run on their hardware, even if it's not, not the most like jackbooted hardware on the market. Right. You'll see, I believe, uh, well, I know Mario Kart 8 looked amazing. I think that game, when it was running at 60 frames per second, 1080p, um, that game... And then, I mean, racing games are really good for showing off um, your tech or whatever. So that's why they always release, like, a new Forza game with a new Xbox, right? So there's the new Forza game coming out with Xbox One X. So racing games are really good for showing off your new tech because there's a lot of flashing colors and things look really good. Um, so the Mario Kart 8 looks, as a consequence, looks really good because... Um, things are moving by very quickly. And I think that's why racing games look very good. But also they put a lot of effort into the art um, direction in in terms of Nintendo games, at least. So they they basically know how to make, even though they're working with a, a potentially, a, well, definitely lesser piece of hardware in terms of uh, graphical power, they can still, with the correct art direction, can still make something look really, truly amazing. Um, so Agreed. I think, yeah, so I think um, I'm very excited for the new Mario game. That's going to be the biggest game, I think, for me this year because um, I love Mario games. I think my first, the first game I ever played was Super Mario Land for the Game Boy, which mm. is one of the weirdest, <laughs> one of the weird Mario games. Um, Super Mario Land 1 and 2 were sort of like spin-off games, but they're definitely part of like the mario universe but they don't take they take place i think on earth instead of the mushroom kingdom which is really weird but uh and things get weird in that game <laughs> in those games uh but that's that was my first mario game and i i've loved them ever since i think i've played <laughs> every single one since <laughs> super mario land holy shit um but yeah they i had a lot of great time playing those and i'm really really excited for this one i think i'm gonna um sink more time into this game than i did to zelda which i recently beat well in the summer i beat it um yeah thanks thanks a lot Avon. um take a bow sir take a bow yeah so basically i i wanted to say that i think 
uh, whether you like Nintendo games or not, you can't really. If if you're a fan of video games, you have to. You can't one, ignore Nintendo them. anymore. You can't ignore them. I think they should be applauded for the Nintendo Switch. It's a great piece of tech, and they're releasing really great games. And there's still many more games to come out. And you can take it wherever you want um, and play it wherever you want. And it comes with two controllers that are pretty cool. Um, so, and I think that because Microsoft and Sony, the Xbox and the Xbox One, and the PlayStation Four are essentially the same box, they do the same things in. If you just lay it all out, they pretty much do exactly the same things and play the same games, except for a few games. Um, and I think that that sort of that's sort of the upper echelon of where games are. And obviously, you have your PC games, which are all obviously the best game, the best place to play, play games. PC obviously, Master PC Master Race. I mean, you can't get 4K gaming at a hundred. 50 frames per second on your PlayStation 4, can you? Um, but yeah, so those two boxes pretty much do the same thing. Uh, and I really applaud Nintendo for not going that route and still sticking to their guns and doing what they want to do and putting out games that are not anywhere else and uh, they're they're really unique games at least. So And they're, they're still trying to push... Um, their their console has all these more motion controls in and uh cool gimmicks i would say i think motion controlling is pretty much a gimmick but at least they're trying to do something different is what i'm trying to say so i always i always like um I think a piece of technology in, in general is a gimmick but i think the yeah. nintendo switch has done it in a way that could be more integrative and interesting yeah. than than other ways i don't know if that's a correct usage or word but yeah i think it's it's Part and parcel of Nintendo's Switch is is using the motion graphics or motion control, and I think it's pretty interesting. Right. So I'm I'm glad that they're putting out a unique piece of hardware, uh, whether or not you uh, have one or not, guys. Uh, tell us in the comments section below what do you think of the Nintendo Switch and where Nintendo's currently going. Uh, do they have a future in this console race? Do you think they're back? Do you think Nintendo is back? Uh, tell us in the comment section below. Yvonne, Yo. thanks for doing this podcast with me. Thank you um, for hosting it, bro. Yeah, no, I had a lot of fun. I love Nintendo games, as you can tell, and um, I really hope they do uh, better than they've done this year, which was absolutely amazing so far. Um, I hope that they go ahead and release all the cool games and they can take my entire bank account. <laughs> um, yeah, so I also wanted to plug a video coming up, a video series that uh, I sort of came up with, but I hope Yvonne <laughs> likes it as well. Uh, maybe we can talk about that later. But um, yeah, so I, I wanted to plug a video game series that we have coming up on our YouTube channel, hopefully this week, if not next week, uh, called Hungover Gaming Retrospective. Um, we're a tentative title, of course, um, where we're going to look back on an older game um, of our childhood or maybe a current game, a uh, game series, maybe. Um, and we're going to delve into all the fun Seri uh, fun stories about these uh, the game and what made it amazing and perhaps uh, revolutionary, some would say, um, in the gaming industry. I think it's going to be a cool series, so be on the lookout and subscribe to our YouTube channel so you can be alerted when it comes out. Um, but yeah, so do you have anything you want to plug, Yvonne, while we're here talking to the people? Uh, check you out the tell updated them about Overwatch stuff? replay on Wednesdays. We have a new segment that we are integrating into that. So if you want any of your Overwatch news along with the hottest tips and tricks, please check that out. And as always, our Friday Junk Play series is dope. And we work yeah, hard to make it good. Yeah, you had one that came out last week which we're, where we played uh, Cuphead. It was a lot of fun. It and was a lot you of fun. Had, you did an awesome job editing that. So go Thanks. check that out on our YouTube channel. We had a lot of fun with 1930s fun games. Um, yeah, so, Yvonne. Yo. People can subscribe to our YouTube channel and they on YouTube.com. And they definitely should. But they can also find us on a social media platform called Facebook, yeah. I think. We've released Probably our page. Uh, we published it when we published this podcast. So please take a look over there. Like it. Um, 
we'll put some updates on there as, as frequently as we release videos and we'll manage to keep you updated with all of our uh, goings on. Yeah, so you can get in contact uh, a whole no with us a whole number of ways, but now we're adding Facebook where a lot of people are uh, to the number on the list. So go ahead and check that out. I believe it will be in the comments section below. I hope I can link it. Uh, if I'm uh, tech savvy enough, I will be able to do that. But Yvonne, we end our podcast every single week with a, in a song in a segment called Hung Over Radio. This is where you, the listener or viewer, can send in your music, whether or not, whether or not you <laughs> wrote, uh, produced, wrote, uh, sang anything, played an instrument on, or maybe your friend um, wants some promotional you know, goodies for their, uh, some free advertisement for their music. You know, you can totally send it into us, get in contact with us, comment section below. You figure it out. Choose the whatever way. I, I check everything, so it, it'll be fine. Um, yeah, so get in contact with us, send us an MP3 link. That'll be great, and hopefully we can share it with the Hungover Gaming community. Um, but if no one sends in something, like, as is the case with every single week, god damn it, unless uh, Yvonne has a, a song that he can think of right now, I have a song for us. No. Well, dang. Because I have a song that is called Super Mario Galaxy Music Orchestra, which is a video recording of the orchestra they use to play the main theme for Super Mario Galaxy. I thought it was That's pretty cool. good timing for the... Um, yeah, they, they did a whole orchestra um, recording for a, at least the main theme. Um, but yeah, I thought it was very good timing for us because Super Mario Odyssey is upon us. Yvonne, it's coming out this week. I'm very excited. Um, so go ahead and uh, listen to this song. And if you like it, give us a thumbs up. And also maybe check me out on Twitch, twitch.tv slash good, because I'll be streaming Super Mario Odyssey. And hopefully Yvonne will be streaming soon once he gets his computer parts. Yes. That's coming up, guys. We're going to have a fun video for that, too. But until next week, guys, um, I'm Julian. I'm Yvonne. Bye. Peace out.